Well, hey friends, I'm in my kitchen today. I hadn't planned on filming anything, but um, as I was getting dinner prepped and I had some other things to do, I thought it would take you along with me. And I think the purpose of this video is to share with you what I do with bulk ground beef. So we tend to get our ground beef at Costco. Um, it comes in a big old package. It's like two and a half kilograms. It's a lot of meat. So today I'm going to just walk with you through how I go through the package um, and what all I do with this giant container of meat. Okay, so first of all, I have my little digital scale here. I love my digital scale. Like I said, I'm an American living in Canada and sometimes kilograms and pounds don't translate well to me because I learned everything um, as far as like pounds are concerned. So anyways, I use this a lot to make sure that I'm getting like one pound increments of ground beef. And I use my scale for a whole lot of reasons, but that is just one of them. So I weighed this out. We are going to have tacos tonight and one pound of ground beef does my family really well. We actually have a little leftover um, for the following day for um, taco salad like leftovers. So I weighed this out and this is exactly one pound. So I'm just going to set this, um, actually I'm just going to stick it in my pan right now. I'm going to put a little oil in there and get that all going, but um, just for the purpose of right now, it's going to go in there. So this is the package that I am talking about. Um, I have a bag here underneath so that the container is not actually sitting on my counter just to try and keep any contamination out of my kitchen. <laughs> um, anyways, this whole package cost me $20.31. It was actually 2.712 kilograms. So I am going to divide up this meat into um, several different meals. I am not just going to throw this whole thing in my freezer and I am going to prepare some of this for other meals. I'm going to make my own homemade meatballs, and I'm going to make some uh, hamburger patties. So I'm going to take you along with me. We're going to see how far this meat stretches, and then if I have any left over, we'll decide what we're going to do from that point. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and weigh out the meat that I need for my meatballs. I'm going to double the recipe, which means I need three pounds of ground beef. Normally, it's just one and a half pounds, um, but when I make meatballs, I do like to um, double the recipe. So we're going to go ahead and weigh that out. Okay, for sanitary purposes, I did not film that so I could have my hands free and clear and wash them well um, before I picked up my camera. So... This is exactly three pounds of meat, like it's just really spilling over there. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and dump it into my bowl and I'm gonna work on my meatballs in just a few moments. This is what I have left. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and make hamburger patties out of this. Um, I think we'll do hamburgers tomorrow night for dinner. And I'll just go ahead and get the patties ready and into the fridge so that when tomorrow it comes time for dinner, I can just easily make them and we'll see what is left. I don't think there's going to be anything left out of this package once I'm done with that. Okay, this tool right here is absolutely amazing. So this is a hamburger press. And believe it or not, it came from the Dollar Tree. I love this thing. Um, it makes perfect uniform um, hamburgers and it cost me a dollar. This thing rocks my world and I love it. I just went ahead and made the rest of the ground beef into patties. So we will have these tomorrow night for dinner and whatever is left over my husband will take to work. Um, that I'm just going to put some saran wrap over this and put it in the fridge for tomorrow. 
that hamburger patty press just makes these into such great great patties now um, because I used all the rest of my ground beef um, I wanted to share with you how I actually package ground beef um, for the freezer if I'm just going to put it in as is so I use my weigh scale and I measure it out into one pound portions. Most recipes typically call for things like one pound of beef, two pounds of beef. Sometimes you will occasionally get the half pound of beef. And if some of your favorite recipes do call for say one and a half pounds of ground beef, I would go ahead and actually freeze half cup, some half cup portions. I wouldn't freeze the whole entire lot in half cup portions, um, but I would definitely make sure to have a couple on hand if you have a few recipes that are your absolute favorites that require um, half pounds. So anyways, I go ahead and I measure it out and I write on my Ziploc bag first before I put any meat inside of it. Your Ziploc bag will start to condensate and your Sharpie marker will not write well onto your bag. This is a medium size freezer Ziploc bag. Um, I really like these. I get them at Costco and I stock up. Um, I find that Ziploc bags store the best in the freezer. Someday I would love to have a food, um, a food saver that is on my list of kitchen wants, but for now I just have these Ziploc baggies. Um, I like to use these. They just work well and I can, things um, freeze flat and that's really important. So when you are freezing your ground beef, you want to flatten it out as much as possible. Um, you don't want to freeze things in a big clump because it makes it harder to freeze the middle of your ground beef. Um, so what I do is I stick the ground beef in and then I smush it out as much as I can inside of the bag. I get all of the air out that I most possibly can because air is the thing that's going to ruin your meat. Um, it's going to cause uh, crystallization and that's just, we don't want freezer burn by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I seal it up and then I lay it flat in my freezer. So this is nice and flat. And then when I store them, I actually store them upright like this so that they're sort of cataloged so that I can see when the date is, how much it is, um, and I make sure that I'm using the old oldest dates first. So all of the new stuff will go behind um, any ground beef that I already have frozen in my freezer. So when it comes to whether or not you freeze raw ground beef or cooked ground beef, that is your preference. Um, personally, I freeze most of my ground beef raw and then I just cook it from frozen. Um, that's just what works best for me. Every once in a while, I will pre-cook it, especially if I have a specific recipe in mind or if it's going in the crock pot for any reason, um, then I might cook it up, but it really just depends on you and it depends on your recipes and it depends on how you cook. For me personally, I don't even always get to the point where I pull my ground beef out of the freezer ahead of time. Sometimes I forget. <laughs> I'm human. Um, and I'll pull it out like an hour, half hour, five minutes before I start making dinner. And you can easily just cook it from frozen. You just want to do it on a lower temperature. Um, I put a lid on it and it sort of just starts to steam. And then you want to just check it every few minutes because it is going to start to cook. And I kind of use my spatula or my scraper and just kind of scrape off what has already started to cook so that the um, uncooked ground beef is then exposed to the pan and then that can start to cook. So... My father-in-law taught me that when I first started cooking for my husband and I. <laughs> um, they came over for a big work day and I panicked because I didn't have any ground beef thawed. We were making, I don't even know what at the time. Um, and he showed me that and that may be a trick that everybody knows, but I'm sure there's somebody who doesn't know. And I know I didn't know it when I first um, was married and started out kind of keeping a home. So there's that. <laughs> Okay, so I wanted to share with you this little basket that I keep inside of the freezer that's on top of my fridge. We also have a deep freezer, and um, what I keep in there is things that we're not going to use immediately. That's kind of more for long-term term storage. This is stuff that we need to kind of go through or... Um, you know, just some quicker meats to have on hand. So, anyways, like I was mentioning, um, I store everything upright. 
And this is just a shoe box, um, a plastic shoe box. And I have everything labeled. And I've got some chicken back here. And I do my chicken the same way that I do everything else. Um, I usually put two chicken breasts in a bag at a time. And then I've got some of these Smokies and then some hot dogs. And then in the bottom here are some two um, beef tenderloins. So this just goes into my freezer like so. I'll show you it in the freezer, but I wanted to pull it out and just kind of give you a little better peek. Okay, so this is how it looks in my freezer. This is the bin right here. Underneath I have some chicken bones, one extra butter, and what else is in here? Um, cream of chicken soup that's like homemade um, that I can use in recipes. So that's what's down in there. Things I don't really need to access, um, but I can easily just pull this out. And then I've got, we went grocery shopping yesterday and we got a lot of frozen things, um, but this is mostly like frozen vegetables and fruit, bone broth and more vegetables and fruit. So when it comes to making my meatballs, I'm going to flash freeze them and I'm going to pull my ice tray out so that I can put my um, baking tray up on top here and let everything freeze um, so that they don't freeze in one big clump. But I'll show you that as we get closer to that point. So as you can see, I am filming as I am doing dinner. It's just kind of... Um, doing everything in between the pockets of my day. So I wanted to share with you this particular tool right here. I love this thing. This is actually from Pampered Chef. I've had it for a few years and it's just um, designed to break up your hamburger meat. It is awesome sauce and I highly, highly recommend this tool. This is one of my favorite kitchen gadgets. Um, it works just so well to make your hamburger smaller and not in big old clumps. I love this thing. Okay, so dinner is done and I went ahead and I added all the ingredients for my meatballs into my bowl and I'm going to go ahead and mix everything up. You can use a spatula for this, um, but honestly I find that your hands work the best. Mine are nice and clean and I'm just going to go ahead and mix everything up. Okay, so my meatball mixture is all mixed up. Um, I have got my baking tray right here. And to make everything uniform, I just use a tablespoon measure. Um, and then I'm able to just kind of scoop up and put the balls nice and close on the tray. And then this will go in the freezer to flash freeze. ahead and I bagged up all of my meatballs. I tried to make it just as even as possible. I did put the number of meatballs um, on the bag and I'm going to put these in the freezer. These are flash frozen so they're not going to stick together even if I just wanted to pull out a few. Um, like if our whole family wasn't going to be here for dinner I could do that and they're not going to be frozen into one big clump. Okay, so it's a day or so later, um, and we did not eat the hamburgers like we anticipated. We weren't home for a couple nights, um, so I'm just going to actually put these in the freezer before the meat goes bad. We're not going to have them tonight. We have something different on our menu plan, and I am just wanting to save these for later. So 
normally I would probably would have just popped them in a Ziploc bag, um, but I had these two um, glassware containers, glass lock containers, um, that I had just washed and I thought rather than put them away, I'll just stick them in here. And so all I've done is place the patties in, but in between each layer I have stuck a piece of uh, parchment paper. So that when they do to thaw, um, they're not gonna be all stuck together rock hard. So I'll just stick the lid on. Um, I'm probably just going to put them in the freezer like this. If I was gonna do long-term storage, what I would do is I would use a piece of tape or washi um, and I would just add a strip on here and the date and what it is um, because sometimes when things get into the freezer they all turn the same color and it's hard to tell what anything is even if you think you're going to remember. So I always keep um, a little um, thing of washi tape in my kitchen command center. It's gray, it's not patterned so it's really easy to read and I always have my sharpie in um, my drawer with all my um, parchment paper and aluminum foil and things like that. So I've always got those two things on hand so I can label, label, label. But on, on all honesty I'm not going to do that with these because we do plan to have them later on this week. So Anyways, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me for this video. I hope this gave you a few different tips as far as it goes with um, dealing with bulk ground beef. Hope you guys have a good day, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.